My name is Mitchell Pearson, and in this video, we're going to talk about AI Assistant in Databricks. This is a really awesome feature. I'm going to show you in this video how to use it to debug and also how you can use it to help you write your PySpark code, so stay tuned. Before we begin, do you want to learn more about DAX or Microsoft Fabric? You can go to prag.works forward slash Mitchell40 and save 40% on an annual on-demand learning subscription to over 100 classes. Now, on to our video. Everything is changing in the world of data as we know it, especially with the innovation of AI being cooked into and baked into all of the different tools that we work with. And I have been exploring and really testing out the capability of the AI assistant inside of Databricks, and I am really excited about this capability. So what I wanna do is just share my screen and talk a little bit about this capability very quickly in this video, and hopefully you will find it to be as exciting as I have. At this time, I haven't fully tested out all the capabilities, uh, I've just been playing with it and I really enjoy what I've seen. So let's take a look at this really cool feature functionality that comes with the AI Assistant in Databricks. I've enjoyed playing around with this. I am by no means an expert, but we're gonna jump right in and take a look. So I have some data right here coming from my movies.csv file. And we're gonna go ahead and display that data just very quickly so we can take a look at what that data looks like. So I'll run it, and there I actually ran it twice. So I ran a blank cell down here as well. Let me get rid of that, there we go. All right, and so I've returned this data. Now what I wanna do is let's extract. Let's make our first goal here just to see what happens. Let's try to extract the year from the title. So we'll have an extra column that's now part of the data frame that shows up here that we can work with, that we can filter on, right? Let's see what happens. I'm not an expert at this yet, but this is pretty cool. So the way that we can access the AI Assistant is really, it's right there in front of us. If I click code, it's going to open up a new code block. And right here, it tells me in the kind of placeholder, it says, hey, start typing or just click generate in order to generate your own code from a prompt. So I'm absolutely, let's do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on generate real quick. And when I click on generate, I am going to tell it that I want to do what? I want to return 1995 or I want to return the year. So return, let's just start with, there's a few different ways we could tackle this. I really just want to return the last five characters and then I want to ignore the very last character. So I really want to return the last four of the last five. But um, So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say return the last five characters from title in DF, I wanna name the, the table here, the data frame, give it as much information as possible, and add that information to a new column. And I'm gonna copy this prompt, because I might wanna come back and change it up a little bit, right? So add it to a new column called, let's even add to this, movie year. All right, let's hit enter, and let's see what happens. So it's thinking, and it's writing some code, okay? Let's see, uh, creating a new column. So it's gonna import a couple of functions here. It's gonna import from SQL functions, column and expression. It's gonna do a df.with column. It's gonna create a new column called movie year. And then it's going to use the expression here and it's gonna do a substring on the title. And the starting position is gonna be minus five from the end and it's gonna grab the last five characters. So I, I gotta be honest, this looks pretty good. I would have done it actually a little bit different way using index. Um, but yeah, this looks pretty good. So let me go ahead and run this. I'm gonna accept, first of all, I'm gonna accept it. I'm not loving everything about it. I need to do something else here, but I'm gonna go ahead and run this real quick and let's see what the data frame looks like. That looks pretty good, right? That looks really cool. Uh, I can see that, I mean, everything here is 1995 at the beginning, but now we're getting into 1994, 1996. This looks awesome. I do want to remove or replace the closing parenthesis here with uh, nothing, right? I wanna get rid of the closing parenthesis. So at this point, we could do really another operation and replace that, but I could have only returned those four characters because this is gonna give it a starting position of minus five from the back, and then I really only wanted four. So, you know, here's the thing. Maybe I wouldn't have written it this way. Maybe I didn't know it, but I know code. Right, I know SQL, I know other programming languages, and this is just a substring function. So 
I'm going to substring of the title, which means I'm going to return a portion of a string. I'm going to give it a starting position and tell it how many characters to return. So that's the starting position. That's how many characters I want to return. This is great. If I click run and I let that run real, there it is. That's magic. That's awesome. I love it. That was really, really cool. So that's one quick little thing you can do with this AI assistant. Now that's not everything, but it is a lot. I like it. I like it a lot. So let's try to take a look at something else. What if, what if, what if I were writing this expression and what if I made a mistake? What if I forgot to close out the, the, the string here, right? This expression. And I were to hit shift enter and run that code. And then it throws an error. Now this error could be a lot of different things, right? And if I come over here and I click on diagnose error, what this actually does is it launches the AI assistant. And not only does it kind of try to find out what I messed up in my code, it also is going to give me information on why it's messed up. So it doesn't just fix the code, it actually explains it. So let's see what it does. The error you're encountering is due to the incorrect usage of double quotes inside the express function. You should use single quotes for the string literals inside the ex expression function to avoid conflict with the double quotes used for the Python string. Here's the corrected code. So it's going to do movie year. That looks great. Substring title. That looks great. Uh, I don't know where it's getting the single quote, double quote, because it didn't change anything there, but it's effectively added back on right here at the end, that double quote that I removed. So if I click on right here, replace the active cell content, replace it, it literally added it back in and now I can run it again. And again, that's pretty cool. I don't care you know, how much code you write. I have used this diagnose option many times, broken it, tried different things, and it is really, really good at actually fixing the problem. I even had the AI assistant generate some code to return a list of all the functions that were in the math module, if I remember correctly, and it generated the wrong code, but then I used the AI assistant to fix it. <laughs> it was, uh, it, it's, it's hilarious how that actually played out. So that was great. So that's the AI assistant. We used it to actually create new column to extract data from the title. That was cool. Then we used it to actually debug a problem. Now let's create a, let's do something a little simpler than this list. Just something very simple. Let's say that I were to create a variable here and uh, the variable is going to be called, you know, a value. Actually, I can just type it in. What if I were to do something like floor? and then 1.9, so I can just return the floor of 1.9, right? If you round 1.9, if you round it, what would we expect round to return? We would expect it to return two. It's gonna round it up, pretty basic stuff. If I were to uh, round 1.4, we would expect it to return one, because it rounds down. But if I decided that I wanted to actually get the floor of this column, of this value, of this variable, whatever it is, I could type something like floor in here and it's a function, right? I know that that would take whatever the value is and automatically go all the way down to the floor like so. So if I did 1.9 and I run this, let's see what happens. And it says the name floor is not defined. Now, maybe you know what that means, maybe you don't, but what that means is that it doesn't recognize that function. And this is a pretty common problem when you're writing PySpark inside of Databricks or inside of you know, Synapse or Fabric or wherever, because there are so many functions and so many modules that you have to pull code from. And so I might say, you know what, I, I got this code off the internet, I got it off the web, I got it off Stack Overflow or something to that effect, and I'm not quite sure why it's giving me an error. Let me diagnose error again. So let's do it. Let's see what it does. And so if I run diagnose error, again, it's going to it's going to read out some information. To fix the error, you need to import the floor function from the math module before using it. Here's how you can do it. And it says from math import floor. It's right there. And I know that's correct because every time I work with these, you know, these math functions, I always have to import them, ceiling, square root, all the various ones that exist. And so if I say replace my code, it's literally now going to import the function that I need to make this code work. And now when I run the code, I'm getting the exact result that I wanted. And again, this is really, really cool. This is really awesome. So what I would encourage you to do, we could spend a ton of time with a ton of data just allowing this AI assistant to really write the code for us. I would encourage you to explore this new capability on your own. Let us know in the comments 
what kind of cool functionality you explored and what kind of cool results you were able to achieve within this new kind of capability that exists in Databricks. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure to take a moment to hit that like and subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next video.